Nick and Chelsea have spent the last few months seeking answers to their impossible dilemma. Hi. Hi. I would say going on this journey has been widely eye-opening. If you don't separate them, how do you think they'll feel about it? I already have fear of them resenting me. Even after everything, I don't have another leg. And my sister passed away, I would have made the same decision. Meeting different twins, it did help me to understand different outcomes. You gotta think about the future for them. Don't you wanna give them that independence? Atma and Amash thought a life joined together would be impossible for them. The parents had been told this treatment was not possible. And then there is a surgeon who just drops from the sky and tells them that it is possible and we can do it. But a million pounds had to be found to pay for the treatment, and it came through donations to Gemini Untwined, the charity David and Oase set up for these cases. Tomorrow, one of the most complex operations in the world will begin. <laughs> The mammoth process to separate these two will require at least four lengthy surgeries and a huge team of staff. Do they understand what we're going to do tomorrow? You've told them? Uh, yeah, you've told them, Mama? And they're ready? Yeah, good. 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 <laughs> Did it fall, and this birthday is now only a few months off. Come here. Kelly and Carter's conjointment is on fallow issue of Pegas conjoined twins. They're conjoined right here is the highest part. Then it goes all the way down to right here. And then this part's Callie's, and then this part's Carter's, and then they both have filling, and then this region, and then this is Callie's leg, and then this is Carter's leg. If I give them the support, they can stand up. Carter, stand up. Callie, stand up. They want to jump. <laughs> All done. Sure, please. If they did have surgery, it would mean sharing out the twins' small intestine, kidneys, and reproductive organs. Good job. Good job. Kelly and Carter were born healthy and remain healthy. And I always wonder when my luck's gonna run out and something's gonna happen. Sometimes at night I'm awake and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna separate them. And then it kind of push back because you have to put in all the risks so that puts a lot of pressure on you. But being conjoined brings its own issues. Here you go. Every so often, Callie will eat something and then Carter will instantly start puking. But there's no way that they're conjoined in the stomach area. So the only way that could happen is if maybe the pressure is on her stomach from her sister. We're not exactly sure what's going on there. Are you ready? Yeah. Going this way. I thought there were going to be four when they decided to walk, but now I'm thinking seven. They each control one leg, which makes it harder for them to walk because one of the girl's legs has to be on the ground and the other one has to be up in the air. Oh, man. No one told me I had to crouch. I can't get in. <laughs> I think they're pretty aware that they're different from other kids. So a lot of people will ask them, like, why are you stuck together? To help them decide which way to turn. Okay, high five. 
Nick and Chelsea are going on an extraordinary journey. It's always exciting to meet any pair of joint twins and their families. I am super excited, even though it will have to bring up some memories and some shared pain. I really want to consider what's best for their interests and getting other people's perspectives it might aid in that choice. It's really an impossible decision to make. Conjoined twins have been a source of wonder for centuries across the world. Culture does play a big part in how these uh, twins are viewed, you know, from the one extreme of being as blessings from God to the other extreme of being uh, viewed as monsters. The most famous were Chang and Eng Bunker from Siam, now known as Thailand. Put on show for years, they finally married and fathered 21 children between them. Brighton-born Daisy and Violet Hilton were also exhibited around Europe and America. Although surgery has been attempted for hundreds of years, successful results have only been made possible with medical advances and operations occurring in early childhood. Swimming. Nick and Chelsea know they have to reach a decision very soon about whether to separate their three-year-old twins. The pros of separating Kelly and Carter, it would give them a sense of individuality because they're always Kelly Carter. They're like, how's Kelly and Carter going to get a job? What are they going to be able to do? Um, the dating aspect. If some boy or two boys are going to want to be in that relationship. <laughs> okay, go. Thinking about separating Kat and Carter, it will always scare me. One of them dying, or both of them dying, is my biggest fear. David and Oais have separated three sets of twins joined at the head over the last 14 years. Our first two cases went really well. It really boosted our experience, our confidence. With our third set, we took a big hit. Safa and Marwa's separation ran into complications. We were very close to the line a number of times where we were going to lose one and potentially both kids. It was stress at the extreme level. The girls survived, but both suffered brain damage. There was a lot of learning that we got from the third case. And our planning for Yitan Darman has been hugely influenced by that experience. The separation of Yeet and Derman will be staged over four surgeries. Can we go table up, please? Okay. Good and down. It's the moment Fatma and Omaj have been both longing for and dreading. This first operation to make more skin is the easiest phase. So our craniotomy is going to be going across there. Can I, shall I just dot that in? 
In order to make sure that you get a good reconstruction at the end, you have to have enough skin. Ready, steady, down we go. Okay, well, first incision. Basically what you're doing is turning one cylinder into two spheres, and there just isn't enough area of skin to do that. Just keep it very narrow, and then open it up there. They need to widen that a tiny bit more. So this is the 200, that's going there. How we get more skin is to place silicone balloons that go underneath the skin and you gradually inject them and they enlarge. The balloons are the size of a small plum and there are four of them. Okay. I think that's good. Happy? Yeah, I think so. I think we've had a really good day and it feels like we've really started now. The Rubicon has been crossed. It will take five weeks for Yeet and Derman's skin to stretch and grow enough before they are ready for their next operation. <laughs> Choosing to risk putting your children through surgery is a difficult decision. But keeping them joined together may also lead to problems. Callie and Carter's parents will be meeting Carmen and Lupita, just one of a tiny number of adult conjoined twins living in America today. I'm curious to know what it's like for them to be older and conjoined. So I think it's just all nerve wracking trying to see into Callie and Carter's future. We've had adults literally ask us, oh my God, are you guys aliens? And it's like, are you, are you, are you in the head or something? Like, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with you, but okay. Yeah, we're different, yeah. We're not like one person with two heads. We get asked if I can see what she sees. Obviously, I have eyes. If we can, like, think telepathically, we can act. Carmen and Lupita's parents were advised not to separate them. Now 20 years old, they have to share the most intimate aspects of their lives, and both are studying at vet college. The field that we want to go into is a uh, dairy herd manager. I want to be managing all the people with the cows. I want to be the boss. Last year, they gained even more independence. Hey, man, I did it. Carmen and Lupita live two and a half thousand miles away from the Torres family. So there's only one way to meet. Hello. How's it going? Hi. What's the best thing about being a conjoined twin? The most generic version we can put it is that we're never alone. What would you guys say is like the most surprising thing that people find out about you? I guess recently, about a year ago, I got my license. Another thing would be that we didn't have to go through like private school or anything and that we weren't really bullied. What's the worst thing about being a conjoined twin? Uh, we do get sick quite a bit. Um, she has respiratory issues. Since we share a digestive system, sometimes it's a little sensitive. My lungs only work 27% to full capacity because of my scoliosis. How's your guys' like mental health? It's not necessarily we have mental health issues because we are conjoined or like we haven't accepted that. We've accepted that for years now. We do have to see someone because Lupita has sometimes panic attacks, but that's just because I have a panic disorder and not just because I'm a joy twin, I just have a panic disorder. <laughs> Sometimes people can be rude or ask dumb questions, in our opinion, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I get the dumb questions. The thing is, also, um, I have a big mouth, so if someone tried to come for us, I retaliate. Yeah, that's Carter. Carter will uh, tell you like it is. And <laughs> So what would you do in our shoes if you were parents of conjoined twins? So can your daughters be separated? Yeah, Kelly and Carter can be separated. If you don't separate them and they're a little older and doctors say they can't be separated, how do you think they'll feel about it? 
I think they would feel that, um, you know, something was taken from them. I already have fear of them resenting me when they're older. I always get worried that they'll move away and never talk to me again. So I just really hope that one day they don't hate me. I'm gonna cry. It's honestly up to you guys of what you think would be the best option for your kids. If you do decide to separate them, always support them, even like if they have medical issues or if they are gonna stay conjoined, the same thing. Whatever you guys think is best. Kids are adaptable, they'll learn. All right, it was nice uh, meeting with you guys and uh, chatting. It was nice to meet you too. Bye. Bye. It was enjoyable to talk to Carmen and Lupita, and overall, just very insightful. They are going through life just fine, just having fun, and being able to accomplish what they need to do. Be careful. Wait a second. But I'm a little worried about Callie and Carter having health issues down the line. I don't know what to do. A Marge and Fatma's decision means living with the reality of what separation surgery entails. Yeet and Derman have been having regular saline top-ups into the balloons in their heads. Okay. This was another hundred. Yeah. Great. I think the expansion's gone really well. We've got a lot of volume in there. And I think we probably made enough extra skin now to cover the head. Everything seems to be going very well so far. The riskiest part of their surgery is now just days away. This time the operation will be a little bit longer and they'll go back to the intensive care unit afterwards. We'll do our very best for them. Are heading to California. I am nervous but super excited. I'm gonna pack some short sleeve clothes since it's probably not snowing where we are going. The clock is ticking for Nick and Chelsea to make a decision about separating their twins. <laughs> Kelly Carter! Are you excited to go on a trip? Yeah. They're on their way to meet a family who also faced this dilemma. It's really comforting to meet other families because not a lot of people know what it's like to have conjoined twins. So it's just really nice to relate on a different level. Erica and Eva were born joined at the sternum. Already parents to three older children, Art and Aida weren't expecting to have more. God, they were tiny. Their hands couldn't even wrap around my finger. They were, they were so small. They were little warriors. They had that in them that they wanted to survive. So I felt like we should be yeah. trying to do anything in our power to help them through life. The twins had complex medical issues from the start. And as they became a bit older, it was clear that Eva's growth was at the expense of Erica's. But Art and Aida were pro-separation anyway. I just remember having a lot of meeting with the doctors and basically it was a lot of negative information that they were telling you, okay, you could lose one, you can lose both. All I knew is that I wanted to give both of them that chance to have an individual life. 
Erica and Eva were 16 months old when they had surgery. We didn't sleep. We, we were there with pins and needles, you know. OK, you know, what's going on? The operation lasted for 17 hours. The surgeons had to divide their bladder and digestive system and separate their livers, which were joined together. The nurse practitioner came in and he goes, OK, you got two girls? I carried Erica over to Eva's bed when they saw each other. Some nurses actually heard the heart rate machine just go up. That moment, it was like, this is it, we did it. It was emotional. Yeah. It was very emotional to see two little girls when they went in as one. It was like giving birth again. It's amazing how their personalities actually flourished when they were separated. <laughs> Erica just blossomed and she started talking and... She hasn't stopped. She hasn't stopped. <laughs> I like being separated because we have our own personalities. My personality is painting and Erica's is sports. <laughs> Sports is my thing. <laughs> but separation means that Erica and Eva each have a colostomy bag and will wear a prosthetic leg for the rest of their lives. As they get older, they'll be more comfortable wearing it. Also, wearing it more often will help them. Being like second nature, you know, putting on your shoes, you put on your prosthesis. OK, come on. Are you right behind me? You want me to sign you up for ballerina class yeah. with your friends? Oh, that'll be good. I am looking forward to meeting the Taurus family. I want to show that there is life after being separated. There's still happiness. There's still that joy with the girls. Give them that opportunity to be two little individuals. We're going to look at you walk. Show us the road. I am proud of the girls. I'm more than proud. I'm over the moon. Just. How much? Um, how much they've accomplished? Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Turn it around. Show me the way. The old Blue on the air. The Torres family have driven 800 miles for this meeting. I am hoping to learn the good and the bad of being separated. Nervous, excited, mostly excited at this point, knowing that it's so close. I feel like I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Yeet and Derman are on the eve of their perilous journey towards separation. I am back. Derman, bukim, Yeet. Evden çıkmadan biliyorlar hastaneye gideceğimiz orada bir işlem yapılacağını doktorları hemşireleri hepsini tanıyorlar. Zor bir an. Ne olacağını bilmiyorsun yaşayacak mı ölecek mi? You want to have done most of your decision making before you actually pick up the knife. 
for the Oase has been planning and rehearsing exactly how we can safely separate the twins' heads without causing any major damage. So what you're looking at now are the two brains and all the major blood vessels, and particularly the veins that are connecting up the two brains. So the plan for the surgery at the moment is we will start off to divide some of these veins. What does happen sometimes is, you know, you will be faced with things that you've not thought of and scenarios that were not visible before on the imaging, for example. Look. So remember, the girls look like you guys looked when you guys were little. Remember when you were stuck together? Oh, yeah. All right, let's go say hi. This meeting of the two families will give Chelsea and Nick a tantalizing glimpse of a possible future for their twins. Hi. Here they go. Hi. <laughs> hi, little ones. Oh, my God, you're precious. Hello. Oh, I was already crying before you guys came. <laughs> I'm too emotional. Well, you and me both. <laughs> What's your name? Okay. You're Callie. I'm Carter. You're Carter. You're Carter. Do you want to say something? I'm Of course. <laughs> <laughs> We share something that nobody else has and nobody else knows. <laughs> I'm gonna take these girls. Oh, well, you're being kidnapped. Come here, Bye. Mama. Oh my oh, God. No. I'm gonna cry. I'm sorry. It's so light. <laughs> you guys were like this. This is how mommy held you all the time. And we're like, let's go. Whee! <laughs> we're back. I think it might be a life-changing day. It might be where we opened up our minds to separating Callie and Carter. Put them on your ears. <laughs> it's the morning of Yeet and Derman's precarious brain surgery. Once the surgeons start, there'll be no turning back. Nothing we do is risk-free. Before they hand over their precious children, it's really, really key that the parents understand what we're doing. Okay, so I'm coming in. Lovely. Let's get the swab, please. Today, David and Oase are starting the delicate process to separate out the brains and the blood vessels that link the two boys. Okay, so here it is. At the moment, the right side of Derman's brain is getting most of its blood supply from meat. How far down are we? Yeah, we can go a bit more. We need to gradually take off the dependency and push the brain back into its own skull. Another piece of soda cell. Every decision and every cut that Oase makes could cause lasting harm to the boys. There is a risk of causing a stroke as we're trying to divide the blood vessels that feed the brains and the veins that drain it as well. So we are three centimeters? Yes. Yeah. So far, so good. We've taken 
maybe six or seven big chunky veins. We're just going to give it a little while because it's slightly congested now. So we are happy about that. So David, yeah. it's going well. Good. We've taken like some of the major veins that were crossing over. So that's the bit I was worried about. Uh, well, that's the that's the bit I was worried about more. I worry about everything. <laughs> Oase also has to untangle the two brains without causing any trauma. Could we just have a look at the model? But there's an unexpected problem. The brains were a little bit more stuck than what we had expected. We've got another we centimetre to go, yeah. and then we should be there. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. You had to use your tools and your surgical techniques to try and gradually decide, well, this bit of brain belongs to Yeet, and this bit of brain belongs to Derman. You have to do that a millimetre at a time. Do we have a ruler? Yeah, it's nearly eight o'clock. Everything's going well, but really slowly. After a while, people's decision-making, although it may appear good, it must take a toll. And then there's the boys themselves. They've been anaesthetised for a long time, they've had blood, so they're not in such a good condition. Time's up. We've got no more shillings for the metre. Yeah, we've not done all of the interface, uh -huh. but I think we've done enough, so we'll come back next time. The twins will be taken to intensive care and closely monitored until the next stage of their separation. The day's gone reasonably well. It was difficult, as expected. We'll have to see how they wake up tomorrow, but um, I'm happy. They will also have to put their daughters through radical surgery. It would be similar to Erica and Eva's, although they were born with an unsavable third leg. I want to show you the girl's body, if okay. that's okay. Yes. See, all these little wrinkles. Oh, cute. This, all, all this, and you can see where the leg was. So all this is the scar of the leg. So the leg went from this way all the way over this way. Eva, come here, let me show them. This is a bone where they were attached. And so she's got more of the other half of the pelvis than she does. Okay. I was able to see Callie and Carter like in the future, see like which twin would be Callie and which twin would be Carter. Can I hold you? Oh, oh my goodness. You guys are amazing, you know that? You're going to do so many things when you grow up. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for you. It's nearly time for Nick and Chelsea to leave. But before they go, Aida wants a final word. I know it's hard, and I know you've mentioned scary losing them. But they're going to hit teenagers. They're going to hit boyfriend, girlfriend. You got to think about the future for them. Work, studies. But don't you want to give them that independence? They'll never have that if they're together. Seeing your daughters was just amazing. It's like Kelly and Carter would be all over the place if they were separate. Yeah. I don't remember even thinking about what could go wrong. It was, what could I give my girls? Mm -hmm. And that's independence, their own life. We always thought if they were older, we'd set them down and be like, you're old enough to understand that this is what's going to happen and this is what can happen. If you want to be separated, we were going to do it. Can I give you my personal opinion? Yeah. Um, if you wait till they're older, they're going to say no. This is the only life they know. Yeah. Why would they want to be separated? So I personally would say, don't leave it up to the kids. This should be your guys' choice. I guess I never thought about that. It's our responsibility to protect our kids. We chose to bring a child into this world, so we should choose what's best for them. This is a major decision. Definitely, if you wait a couple more years, 
make sure you get take them to therapy because they're going to need it. Okay, yeah, it's great talking with you. Yes. I can't say what they should do. I think they should choose to do what's good for them in their heart. Air hugs. Uh, Yay! All right. I hope they make the decision that's right for their family. Can I give you girls a hug? Oh, thank you. Can you kiss? So at first I feel like Aida was stepping over a line, Sorry. but it was more of a hard truth telling us that we are the voice for Callie and Carter. Hop in, buddy. Yeah, it definitely made me sit back and kind of, it's kind of like an eye opener. Seeing Ava and Erica walking around, it just makes me realize that things can't happen even if they only have one leg. It was nice seeing you know, how happy they were the idea of separation is a lot more positive after this experience. They're just really nice people. They're really joyful. But Nick and Chelsea are still to make up their minds. Shh. Keep quiet, Mama. Uncle Wallet, go hi. Kelly Carter, do you have my phone? No. Are you lying? Yeah. <laughs> Callie and Carter may be conjoined, but like many three year olds, they can still be a handful. They sneak phones or a little sneak candy. They'll work together, so they're definitely mischievous. You're having school today, yeah? If the twins are to be separated, it's best done as young as possible. And with Callie and Carter's fourth birthday looming, a decision has to be taken soon. Callie, do you know this color right here? Orange. Orange. Do you know this one, Carter? Purple. Good job. They do learn a lot of um, life skills as well as well as academic skills. Let's go over here. Will you cook me some lunch? Yeah. Okay. They're really great at sharing because that's what they've had to do their <laughs> their whole life. Put it in the pan. Good job. But Carter likes to take over a lot because she seems to be a little bit more dominant. Run away. Follow me. If the twins stay together they'll face a lifetime of compromising with each other. Sometimes they do argue. They'll say it that way, that way, and they'll start pointing which way they kind of want to go. And then that's when I have to step in. Push, push, push. Previously, Nick and Chelsea have been meeting other conjoined twin families to weigh up the pros and cons of separation. What's the best thing about being a conjoined twin? The most generic version we can put it is that we're never alone. Carmen and Lupita are 20 years old and couldn't be separated. We do get sick quite a bit. My lungs only work 27% to full capacity. Since we share a digestive system, sometimes it's a little sensitive. Hi. They also met a family who would face the same dilemma. I'm give you a hug. This is a bone where they were attached. And so she's got more of the other half of the pelvis than she does. I don't remember even thinking about what could go wrong. It was, what could I give my girls? And that's independence. Now, Nick and Chelsea are continuing their quest to find answers to their dilemma. No! Ah! Balance. <laughs> Hold on. We're doing good. Okay. It's all in core. Abby and Brittany are one of only 12 known sets of adult conjoined twins living around the world. When it comes to decisions, we definitely compromise, compromise. obviously, because we, we have, have to. to. Else, Brittany's a lot more like neutrals and pearls mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and I would rather have it be more fun and bright and colorful. Hi, guys. Their bodies may be joined, but they don't always have the same reactions. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh. Yeah. caffeine affects us so, so much. much. One time in the um, winter, I had three different things of caffeine, and I was literally I was like, hey, everybody, hey, let's go. <laughs> it doesn't affect Abby, though. I get, like, energy, but not, my heart doesn't race. 
We're always different temperatures, so I get super hot way faster. And there's a distinct red line all the way down. And I'm like legitimately, like my legs are sweating, like everything, like it's awful. And she's fine. Isn't that weird? Abby and Brittany train to be teachers. We're going to get one salary because we're doing the job of one person. As maybe we experience comes in, we'd like to maybe negotiate a little bit, considering we have two degrees and because we are able to give two different perspectives or teach in two different ways. And they were brought up to believe they could do anything they wanted. We're going to Chicago! I think we're good drivers. We each had to take the test. Uh, we both passed, obviously. How do I uh, put on cruise control on this shindig? Oh, there we go. When we drive, Abby is control of the gas and the brakes, and then we both steer, steer. obviously. <laughs> I don't know if Abby, Conjol, Kelly, and Carter go on a road trip with a bunch of friends. It was really nice to see that they were happy with their lives, though, and that they found a career path that they enjoy. I want them to be able to drive and be able to have friends and be able to have that crazy road trip where we're worried or we don't know where they let's are. Not, let's not worry about the road trip. Let's, uh, let's try to reel them in on that one. <laughs> it's impossible to predict the lifespan of conjoined twins. We net geworden we were not going to live. We are now 18. Ronnie and Donnie lived until they were 68, a world record. But where separation is hoped for, some twins live in countries that lack the medical expertise. <laughs> and these parents often don't have the money to take them somewhere that does. Twins Yeet and Derman were fortunate. Their £1 million treatment was funded by donations to a charity set up by the surgeons. They arrived in London six weeks ago and are now halfway through four complex and dangerous operations to separate their heads and brains. It's really key that before you undertake an operation of this magnitude, that the parents really do understand what the risks are. The risk of quite significant neurological injuries and the risk of losing one or both children. All of this has been separated. We've got this half left, and then there's this bit in the middle. So rare is this condition that Yeet and Derman will only be the fourth set of twins that Professor David Dunaway and Mr. Awais Jelani have attempted to separate in the last 15 years. So uh, this bit in the middle, that's the really complex bit, isn't it? Yeah. So this is the 200 that's going there. So far, they've stretched the skin covering the twins' heads. OK. It's gone really well, and I think we've probably made enough extra skin now to cover the head. Let's get the swab, please. Then they started the delicate process of disentangling their brains. Let's just give it two minutes, because at the moment it's just slightly congested. The brains were a little bit more stuck than what we had expected. The surgeons are at a critical point. So he will go face up, he will go face down. Yes. Count of three, one, two, and three. Disconnect, lift up, and hold. Awais and David are hoping to finish dividing Yeet and Derman's last shared big blood vessels. So we're going to be rotating like so. And finish separating out their brains. Until they're separated, they're in a very unstable state. I do get emotionally involved because you are the one who's spoken to the parents and who's given them hope. So you carry that burden of responsibility on your shoulders all the time. OK, to start.
I definitely feel like separation is a huge risk. Some people might see it like a simple skin separation and it's, it's not that simple. It's very complex. Separating Callie and Carter would mean sharing out vital organs and each twin only having one leg. I couldn't imagine being conjoined in front of my sisters, but I know what it's like to have freedom. I want Callie and Carter to be separated. I want them to play with each other and play hide and seek. I do want them to experience that freedom. So Nick and Chelsea are meeting a twin who was separated over 20 years ago, who lives nearby. My name on TikTok is One Leg Gabby. Gabby is 22 and uses a social media platform to tell her story. People ask me a lot of crazy questions. I think the most popular is, how do you go to the bathroom? I get questions about that, and then a lot of people want to know about my twin sister. pretty independent and mobile for being in a wheelchair and having one leg. 22-year-old Gabby was born a conjoined twin. I only have one kidney, and I don't have a bladder, and I do have a urostomy. So I get kidney infections quite often, but I'm pretty healthy. She recently moved with her family from California to Idaho Falls. I'm surprised all of this isn't frozen, too. I don't really have a lot of friends. I'm very shy, and, and so I just like hang out with my sisters all the time. I'm not dating right now. I think it's hard for anyone our age, but I think it's harder being in a wheelchair and having one leg. I'm really excited to meet the Torres family. I've never met anyone like me before or how I was. I think it's gonna bring a lot of emotions. Gabby and Michaela were born in 1998 and were joined at the pelvic bone. This is the day my mom got to hold us for the first time after we were born. I think she always weighed the pros and cons to getting it, but she always wanted us to be able to live our own life. And that's why we were separated at eight months old. The surgery was successful, and the twins were relatively healthy. My bond with Michaela went beyond being twin sisters. We were just totally inseparable. We would sit together and put our feet together and pretend like we still had two legs. And we would always wonder what it would be like if we were still conjoined. But when Gabby and Michaela were 13, the mesh used in their surgery became so infected, they spent three months in hospital. I started to get better, and I got to see Michaela. She was intubated, but she was able to speak in sign language to me and let me know that she loved me. And I didn't know then that that was the last time I was gonna see her. And the next day, my mom told us that she had passed away. I didn't understand why I got to live and she didn't. And I thought, if I came into the world with her, I should have been able to leave it with her. I mourned the life that I had with her and I mourned part of myself too. And I think I'm still trying to navigate through life without my other half. I think about Michaela every single day. Every time I look in the mirror, every time I look at my hands, every time I just get in my wheelchair, I think of her. With their separation decision still in the balance, 
Nick and Chelsea are hoping Gabby will be able to help them make up their mind. The media put the hype of conjoined twins making it through the surgery, but show what happens after the surgery. Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Do you remember being conjoined? Um, we were separated at eight months. Oh, okay. I think they wanted us to be separated so early because they thought the surgery might be kind of traumatic for us to remember. The doctors and my mom weren't sure what kind of quality of life that we would have if we stayed conjoined. I see a separated twin and I'm like, well, you know, look at them doing all this cool stuff. But then I don't want them to go through the surgery. I don't want them to go through the pain. So it's just like, it's, it's, it's impossible. I just can't figure it out. Like, if you did separate them, people are always going to be like, keep them conjoined. And then if you keep them conjoined, well, why don't you separate them? Yeah. So I feel like you can't win in a situation like this. Yeet and Derman's parents have already chosen which path to follow. So we're literally just doing a millimetre at a time. And now, Oase and David are at one of the most hazardous parts of the surgery. And it's like all the same. Fused muchness. They're very complex processes and some things will go right and some things will go wrong. It was exactly at this stage in their previous separation that things took a dramatic turn. Safa. Allah. Safa and Marwa from Pakistan were the third set of twins that David and Oase attempted to separate. Funding issues meant the twins were nearly 22 months old before surgery could even start, later than the surgeons would have liked. There's something losing deep down there that I can't see at the moment. Something was not right. They were bleeding more than they should have. And it was unclear to us why. In, and in hindsight, perhaps if we'd stopped and come back another day, maybe things would be better. The pads are on and they are ready to shock if you need to. The twins' shared blood pressure meant they became dangerously unstable. Do you have a pulse or not? There was a chance that we were going to lose one of them. We're not stable, but we are less unstable. Good enough for me. The two girls were clearly compromised, and that played very heavily on me. You know, you give it everything you have, intellectually, uh, physically, emotionally, it's just the feeling that we could have done better um, and we need to do better. I'm trying to stay away from this white matter. And this is the bit where it gets congested and stuff. Yeet and Derman's future rests on the lessons learned and the precision with which Oase yields his tools trying to find the edges of each of their brains. The interface is just tricky, very tricky. OK, stay like that. One step from the other side now. To get deeper in, he'll have to cut more of the lining that surrounds the twins' brains. Once we open up the dura, then there's just the veins holding the two heads together. In the bigger picture, we've got more stuff to do, the big drain veins, and if we don't do those right, it's just end of story. I couldn't imagine being stuck to somebody yeah. and then waking up and not understanding that they're no longer there with me. Yeah. Do you think we just separate them? You know what's best for them. They're a part of you, and I think it's hard to say that any decision you make would be wrong. Exactly, because a lot of people who have these opinions, they don't have conjoined twins. Yeah. Everyone always asks me if I regret being separated, and then I also wonder, if my sister would still be here if we hadn't got separated. But even after everything and my sister passed away, I would have made the same decision. I want to play with toys. Yeah, you guys can play with toys. Daddy, where did it go? Where did it go? I don't know. The toy got broken.
<laughs> she has one leg like me, huh? Yeah. Guys, do you know where my leg is? Look, I don't have another leg. I'm extremely grateful for my mom's decision to separate us. <laughs> yeah, because we got to learn what it was like to be individuals and have that quality of life as our own person. Thank you guys for coming. Bye. Bye, girls. Say thank you. It was cool to meet you. Bye. Callie and Carter warmed up to me pretty quickly, and they were so funny. As they get older, I'll be able to answer any questions they'll have, too, and I know they'll be really curious. Bye, guys. If Chelsea and Nick decide not to separate Callie and Carter now, when their twins are older, they could take matters into their own hands, which would put them more at risk. Lale and Ladin Bajani were 29 years old when they chose to be separated. We have a lot of dreams to do after surgery. I want to become a lawyer, and my sister wants to become a journalist like you. <laughs> <laughs> they were born in Iran in 1974, at a time when this surgery often led to death or brain damage. Although they managed being together, living independently and studying at university, Lale and Ladin dreamed of having separate lives. Their decision to take on the considerable risks involved so they could be free from one another captured the world's attention. We uh, hope the surgery will be successful and we feel uh, happy, excited, and a little bit nervous, especially me. <laughs> Their surgeons attempted the separation in one marathon operation. But they discovered their brains not only shared a major vein, but had also fused together. The twins had made it clear they wanted surgery to continue no matter what. but their division led to major blood loss. I'm afraid I do not have very good news for you. Ladan Bijani passed away a few minutes ago. And despite the surgeon's best efforts, 90 minutes later, Lale also died. <laughs> no one has attempted adult twins ever since. Look at your knife. Although surgical techniques have evolved, the risks of separating two very young brains remain significant. Wow, impressive. I like this auto disconnecting at the moment. Yeah. You see, yeah, you can see the space really opening exactly. up, can't you? By cutting more of the twin's shared membrane, a waste releases some of the pressure holding the two brains together. The first thing that came to mind was almost the moment that Moses must have had when the Red Sea parted and he could see the light at the other end. So sort of almost showing you the way. Now a waste can access the deepest part of where the brains meet. He also has to separate one of the last big veins shared by the twins. Okay, I'll take the vascular clamp. Hmm. It's just very engorged already, David. Yeah. And if it gets more engorged, where it is, we won't be able to find it if it leaks, starts oozing. Okay. It's a big hoser. No, there has been a hypertension, no question. There is a risk of causing a stroke. With the vein showing worrying signs, they make a decision to call a halt for today. Until they wake up and you see them awake, you, you know, you, we, don't, we can't tell for sure how well they will do. We expect them to do well, but I'd like to see it, and then I'll sleep properly.
Nick and Chelsea's separation dilemma has been thrown into sharp relief after their meeting with Gabby. I think Kelly Carter being able to reach a level of independence that Gabby has would be awesome. But seeing the struggle that she's dealing with after losing her sister was very hard for me. I was surprised to hear that Gabby didn't regret her surgery because her sister possibly would still be alive. I'm uncertain about separation. It's just really confusing for me at the moment. All right, Callie and Carter are gonna attempt to get on this chair. Everybody has their eyes 100% glued to you whenever you're out in public. So that puts a lot of pressure on you. Mommy! I see you, show me you get up there. If Chelsea and Nick choose not to separate Callie and Carter, their twins will always attract attention. Kelly Carter, are you excited you got on the chair? Yeah. To help counter negative perceptions, Chelsea posts photos and videos online. Conjoin twins at one time were freak shows, but I'm more educating people on how Kelly and Carter are. So here are the things that some people write online. Oh my God, they've gotten so big and beautiful. Oh my gosh, they're so cute, even though they are conjoined. Do they both eat or just one? I bet mom would make lots of money if she rolled them in a circus as a freak show. What exactly does she want airing these kids in this dreadful condition? I've had people say that I'm just a selfish mom and that I should put my girls first and separate them. But people don't understand what we're going through. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. For twins joined at the head, 90% don't live beyond the age of 10. So for Amaj and Fatma, surgery is a risk worth taking. You can cover the eyes. There's a little bit of brain still linked between the two. And there's one artery that we need to divide. Hopefully at the end of the procedure we'll have two separate kids. It's been a week since Yeet and Derman's last operation. And any swelling should have reduced. Yeah, suction. There you go, Jim. I'm just trying to see what that brain, bit of brain is with. You get the feeling it's with this brain, but... Okay, give me a wet mastoid. While Oase is finishing the internal separation, David starts preparing for the reconstruction of the skulls. So this is the skull bone that we've removed. We've gradually chipped it apart with chisels and saws. So now we have two separate pieces, twice the area. Over the years, this bone will gradually grow back to the full thickness that it was before. OK, irrigation bipolar. Micro scissors. So just put your finger there. Just put this okay. finger there, that's it. So we've got the last two snips left. I just want to get those snips right. Yeah. Kelly Carter, want some fries? Yeah. Oh, my hot. They're hot. With Callie and Carter's fourth birthday just around the corner, Nick and Chelsea want to find out more about how twins can manage a life together. I think these are the first male conjoined twins I've seen. They walk really well. Eighteen-year-olds Sona and Mona have lived at this children's home since being given up for adoption by their parents at two months old. पहला जो छोटे सी हाँ हाँ नू पसंद है कि लोग की बाहर जाने या मिल दे ऐसा नू इस तरह और किसी नू क्यों नहीं मिल दे हाँ नू कल्याण क्यों मिल दे उन्हें ये तरह लगता इसलिए उन बहुत बढ़िया लगता उन्हें उन्हें लगता है 
ਕਰ ਹੀ ਲਈਦੀਆਂ ਤਕਰੀਬਨ ਹੈਬਿਟ ਬਣ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਰੁਟੀਨ ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਕੋਈ ਫੀਲ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਕੋਈ ਮੁਸ਼ਕਿਲ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਕਿਸੇ ਚੀਜ਼ ਦੀ ਸਾਡੀ ਚੀਜ਼ ਤੋਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਤੋਂ ਲੜਾਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਇਹ ਕਰਨਾ ਜੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਨਾ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਪਲੇ ਥਿਸ ਆਨ ਦ ਮੂਨ ਫੇਰ ਯਾਰ ਤਦ ਕਾ ਜਬ ਇੱਕ ਕੋ ਨੀਂਦ ਆਤੀ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਫਿਰ ਸੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਜਬ ਇੱਕ ਕੋ ਮੁਝੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਨੀਂਦ ਆਤੀ ਮੈਂ ਫੋਨ ਚਲਾਤਾ ਰਹਤਾ ਹੂੰ After doing well at school, Sona and Mona are now studying for a diploma in electrical engineering. ਮੈਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਾ ਸੀ ਥੋੜਾ ਕਿ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਲਈ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਨਾ ਔਖਾ ਹੋਊਗਾ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਚਾਰ ਬਾਹਾਂ ਆ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਤੋਂ ਲੱਗ ਕੇ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ 20 ਵੀ ਫੁੱਟ ਤੋਂ ਉੱਪਰ ਲਾਈਟਾਂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਚੇਂਜ ਕਰ ਲੈਂਦੇ ਆ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਫਾਇਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਮਿਲ ਕੇ ਦੋਵੇਂ ਛੇਤੀ ਛੇਤੀ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਕੰਮ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਆ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਰੱਬ ਨੇ ਚਾਰ ਹੱਥ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਆ ਛੇਤੀ ਛੇਤੀ ਦੋਵੇਂ ਕੰਪਰੋਮਾਈਜ਼ ਕਰਕੇ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੰਮ ਕਰ ਬਟ ਦੇ ਵੁਡ ਲਾਈਕ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਕੈਰੀਅਰ ਸਿੰਗਰ ਬੰਨਾ ਸੀ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਇਸ ਸਮੇਂ 뮤직 ਦਾ ਪੂਰਾ ਸ਼ੌਕ ਹੈ ਆਵਾਜ਼ ਬਹੁਤ ਅੱਛੀ ਹੈ ਦੋਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਕਿਤੇ ਡਿਪੈਂਡ ਕਰਦਾ ਇਨ ਫਿਊਚਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਦੇਖੋ ਕੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਉਹ ਹੋਏਗਾ ਹੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਵੀ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਨਾਰਮਲ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਵਿਆਹ ਹੋਵੇ ਨਾ ਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਵੀ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਹੋਵੇ ਨੋ ਨੋ ਐਸਾ ਕੋਈ ਰਿਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ਼ਿਪ ਨਹੀਂ ਗਰਲ ਫਰੈਂਡ ਵਾਲਾ ਨੋਟ ਨੋਟ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਡ ਹਮ ਖੁਸ਼ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਨੇ ਹਮੇ ਅਲੱਗ ਅਲੱਗ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹਮ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਕੋ ਪੋਸ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਕਹਤਾ ਹੈ ਪੋਸੀਬਲ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਹਮ ਨਹੀਂ ਚਾਹਾਂਗੇ ਅਲੱਗ ਅਲੱਗ ਹੋਣਾ ਹਮ ਚਾਹਾਂਗੇ ਕਿ ਸਾਥ ਸਾਥ ਹੀ ਰਹੇ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਹਮਾਰੀ ਦੋਸਤੀ ਐਸੀ ਬਣ ਗਈ ਕਿ ਹਮ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਰਹਿਣੇ ਲੱਗ ਗਏ ਹਮ ਐਸੇ ਖੁਸ਼ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਚਲੋ ਦੋਨੋਂ ਜੀ ਰਹੇ ਦੋਨੋਂ ਜੀ ਰਹੇ ਸੋ ਨਾ ਮੋਨਾ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਰੀਲੀ ਗੁੱਡ ਐਟੀਟਿਊਡ ਇਟ ਲੁਕਸ ਲਾਈਕ ਦੇ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਫਨ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਟੂ ਬ੍ਰਦਰਸ ਇਨ ਵਨ ਬਾਡੀ ਬਟ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਥੇਅਰ ਸੈਪਰੇਟ ਆਈਡੈਂਟੀਟੀ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਵਾਂਟ ਟ੍ਰਾਈ ਓਕੇ ਹੈ ਰੈਡੀ ਸੀਇੰਗ ਟਵਿਨਸ ਥੈਟ ਆਰ ਟੁਗੇਦਰ ਐਂਡ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਦੇ ਡਿਡ ਇਨਕਰੇਜ ਮੀ ਟੂ ਕੀਪ ਕੈਲਿੰਗ ਕਾਰਟਰ ਟੁਗੇਦਰ ਕਮ ਹੀਅਰ ਫੰਕੀ ਲੈਟ ਮੀ ਚੈੱਕ ਕਮ ਹੀਅਰ ਬਟ ਆਲਸੋ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ ਵਾਂਟ ਥਮ ਟੂ ਰੀਜ਼ਨ ਅਸ ਇਨ ਐਨੀ ਵੇ ਨਾਈ ਨਾਈ ਬੇਬੀ Okay, okay let's have an artery clip. That's potentially the most critical bit here. It's that little tongue now. Away and David are at a pivotal moment in separating the brains of Heath and Dermon. Just give it a moment. Okay. Yeah, I think Moses would be proud. Okay. Wet mastoid please. Okay team, record the time we're done. Fantastic. 10 past 2, yeah. So I'll take yeah. an inside knife, new blade. But there's one final stage, separating the skulls. Wanna push one brain out of the way. Just careful with that piece of bone floating in the air. Uh yeah. We got some heavy yeah. wire cutters. Happy? Yeah. Okay, give me scissors. Okay. So they're separate now. So very gently count of 3, 1, 2 and 3. Yeah, they're two separate kids. For the first time in their lives. Yeet and Dermen are now completely apart. You happy? Uh, am I happy? Yeah. Understatement of 2020. It's not until you physically lift them away from each other that you finally realize and acknowledge that the separation's been completed. Gently, 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 gently. It's a moment that you've been uh, thinking about, planning for for such a long time that when it finally does arrive it really is a very big moment well Good. done yeah it's was great to see them apart it's very very emotional but you've still got to put everything back together that so they can survive and be separate people with the brain still exposed Now comes the tricky task of reconstructing the twins' skulls. 
This is all the bone that we took off from the sides of the head. It's been split into two halves. One half will go to the other theater for Yeet, and the other half will stay here. Perfect. So then if we, say, set it back... Yeah, yeah that's, that's much nicer mm -hmm. then, isn't it? If it doesn't go back together, it's a disaster because you've got exposed brain with no bone or skin to cover it. Only now will the surgeons discover if the tissue expanders have made enough skin. As it comes off, you can feel it giving. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking great. And there are a couple of little so scoring bit, stitches, yeah. but nothing much. With Derman, we haven't been able to expand as much as we would have liked to, so we're going to have to put a skin graft on the back of uh, Derman's head. Nice. No, I think this looks a nice repair. With both twins' heads now protected, the surgery is complete. Thank you, team. It's been a really excellent day, absolutely fantastic, the way everybody's worked together, and we're all delighted. Everything is good. Oh, good. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Fatma and Amash brought their twins to London for a series of four difficult operations, totaling more than 40 hours and spanning a period of seven weeks. All in the hope of giving their children a better life. Hayatımın en unutulmaz anı ama bu değişik bir duygu ya çok farklı. Tamamen beynim kilitlendi. O çocukların o ayrı vaziyette yattıklarını gördükten sonra yani mutluluktan ağladım. It was just a really, really powerful moment, really powerful moment to be there and share that with them. Now here is a chance for their two sons to lead a normal life. few weeks can be quite critical they can still have complications so you have to be cautiously optimistic at the end of the surgical separation you know it's a good place to be but you're not out of the woods yet <laughs> it's been 15 months since Awais last visited Turkey Today, he's come to see how twins Yeet and Derman have been getting on since their surgery. Everyone has taken COVID tests so they can meet safely. When I entered their house, I could hear the shouts and the cries of two active young boys playing. I saw the smiles and the relief. When Awais first met the twins... This is Eid, yeah. and this is their man. Omash and Fatma were in despair. <laughs> now they have hope. This is a good thing. We have a lot of time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a nice feeling. We haven't the atmosphere was magical. It seemed like a, a journey had been completed. It really was a very warm feeling that what we'd promised we delivered. Jelani bir hiçbir zaman güvenimizi yitirmedik. Her zaman sonsuz ona güvenimiz. 
<laughs> like all separated conjoined twins, Yeet and Derman need specialist help to catch up with their language and physical skills. Looks very good. Yeah, yeah really the good. brain looks very good. Yeah. The level of progress is extremely encouraging. Derman is walking with minimal support. Yeet will be walking in the coming months. Their neurocognitive development is excellent as well. From my perspective, this is at the top end of what our expectations were. So this bodes really well for the future. Gelecek de güzel şeyler olacak. Yani çok şükür çocuklar sağlığına kavuştu. Yani bir anne babanın görevi neyse, çocuklar üzerinde yapması gereken neyse en iyi şekilde yapmaya çalışacağız. Gençliklerini kendileri yaşayabilecek, bağımsız olarak dünyada hareket edebilecektir. Seeing these two beautiful, thriving boys doing so well and to know that we had a small part to play, it really is difficult to describe how good it felt. Should twins be separated? The question is balancing the risks of separation against the difficulty of being joined. But it's a, it's a very weighty decision to make. I wouldn't like to be a parent having to make those decisions for my children. Three, two, one. Okay, this one's for Callie. Callie and Carter are celebrating their fourth birthday. This one's for Carter. It's been really hard making this decision for Callie and Carter. Nick and Chelsea have spent the last few months seeking answers to their impossible dilemma. Hi. Hi. I would say going on this journey has been widely eye-opening. If you don't separate them, how do you think they'll feel about it? I already have fear of them resenting me. Even after everything, I don't have another leg and my sister passed away, I would have made the same decision. Meeting different twins, it did help me to understand different outcomes. You gotta think about the future for them. Don't you wanna give them that independence? We have an insurmountable amount of pressure coming from the outside world. I feel a lot of people see you can join twins as a problem. They see them as broken and they need to be fixed. But to us, they are two healthy four-year-old girls. And Jason? So ultimately, we've decided to keep Callie and Carter together. We know that not everyone will understand our decision and that some people will think we're making the wrong one. One, two, three. We've now met a few pairs of conjoined twins that have succeeded. So there is hope, but I know it's going to be a struggle. And I know it's going to be complicated. Smile, everybody smile. I just hope that Callie and Carter understand that we love them and all that we wish for is they'll be successful in whatever they both decide. Eighteen months after separating Safa and Marwa, Awais and David are paying a last visit. Look at you, strong girl, hey? The twins' mother, Zainab, is finally able to take them home to Pakistan. Hey, Safa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeet and Derman continue to make good progress a year and a half after their surgery. You can do it. Help each other. And Callie and Carter remain in good health and are now learning how to stand up. Come on. Come on. Let go of the ground. Oh, so close.